Try and there we go. Oh, look at that. We're actually live. I'll have to play the intro at some point. There you go. Uh -oh. Hello, 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 hey. hello. Well, we're just we're warming it up for the fans. So, you know, and then we'll go from there. And we'll have to explain why one of us is dressed like a proper gentleman and uh, uh, the uh, other uh, is uh, not. Uh, and it's the other not. one's in a tuxedo. Yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. Or, or a, or a Look at you. Either. Look at you having humor. I'm going, mm. uh, listen, listen, I'm enjoying what I think is possibly the one last day of summer that snuck into London somehow. Mm. Okay. I went for a walk this morning and I swear I came back. I, I dressed up, I put, you know, uh, yeah. a rain jacket on and I had something warm and, and I went for a walk and I thought, what the hell am I doing? It's like, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's sunny. The sun was beating down on me. And so, uh, on my screen in front of me, which you which you can't see, I've got uh, I've got scenes of Miami playing right now, and I've gone back wow. into Miami mode, which I all was right. uh, expounding all summer. Okay, and uh, I thought, why not? You know, all right. Well, well forget well, Miami I'm... right now. Forget Miami right now. Uh, actually, we're going Cuban as usual. Not now. This one extra special cigar. Extra special. Is it? Cigar. All right, well, hold on. You know what we're going to do in a second. Um, mm -hmm. Now that the fans are joining us, because, you know, we don't like to start the show without the fans. Um, we're going to start the show officially, yes. and then we're going to tell everybody what we're smoking and drinking. Um, and the dancing girls come out. It's a whole thing. It's going to be very exciting. So here I we dare go. you. I double dare you to go to titles. This is 2OF Entertainment. The Habanos Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment, with over 100,000 YouTube subscribers and rapidly growing to be the most watched and podcast cigar show broadcast globally. The Habanos Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment. Well, welcome funny. everybody to the funny. show. That was a dare, double dare, and you just—I know it back. was. You did. You went into poker face, and you went. Boom. Boom. Oh, yeah, that's all I took. You can't bear me. I'm in a tux. I'm, now, first of all, there's only two of us here today. So if you're here for the Samane, the great Usman had a family emergency. Oh. Um, he, he won't be joining us today. And the viewership now is just going to go. But if you want just the, the two uh, novices, you have us. Um, and who knows what we're going to where we're going to end up talking about and what we're going to talk about today. But first. I know he'll be smoking his Cuban. I'm smoking a non-Cuban. I'm smoking a, um, a Viga Fina, Year of the Dragon, which oh, is really? actually, yeah, it's not an actual, it's actually not a bad little stove. So for you people that um, are buying New World cigars or non-Cubans, this is a nice little cigar for you. If you'd like, there you go. Let me give you a little picture. That brings picture. up an interesting question, by the way. Yeah. I have several questions, but there you go. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yes. Now, I'm sorry, our, our official Cuban here will now give us the thing. And look, look, this is the part that you like is the nice, nice little labels. Look, there's a little label. That I, I love so labels. I, I love I'll, labels. I'll bring I this love bands. And give, I'll give that one to you when I see you in London. As, as, we, were, as we were having a chat last time, yeah. often a cigar smoker is smoking the band. Um, not literally, but you know what I mean is you're picking mm -hmm. and choosing labels. Just... Given this yesterday evening by a very, very nice uh, cigar smoking buddy of mine, uh, a very mm -hmm. nice friend, he's given me what most people, hang on, let's see if I can get a little bit of focus on that. There you go. So that's the Paul Laranyaga Galanes. This is an aged Galanes. So this wow. Galanes, uh, he asked me, in fact, as, as we went live, I got messages from him saying, let me know when you smoke the Galanes. Let me know what you think about it. I'm going to smoke it now. I haven't uh, <laughs> contact. <laughs> but like, yeah, this... I'm going to let you know live what I think of it. So, yeah, you'll know in a minute. So, you know what? It's fabulous. You know, it's okay. absolutely. Okay. So the whole point of aging, if I can, there's, there's some people who know something about aging. There's some people there who know stuff about, who've forgotten He's... things about aging that I've yet to learn. So you've got right. the whole crowd there, right? Aging in Cuban cigars, Cuban cigars have got generally complex flavor, uh, complex uh, aromas right. and uh, flavors associated with them as compared right. to the new one cigars or the, uh, as, as Osman likes to say, the, uh, what did he say? The non-Cuban. Non Right. The poor person cigar. The we got aging it, yeah. process is meant to diminish the, um, uh, let's say, the strength of the cigar whilst retaining the flavors. Okay. okay. So 
The, uh, it's, I think it's all in the wording, to be honest with you, because it, the wording can be confused, confusing. But some people, most people, I think, including me, used to yeah. think that aging processes with cigars just diminish them and bring them to a smoother, creamier level. Okay. More sophisticated people than me, more learned people than me, have advised me that the point of aging a cigar is to take the the sting out of the cigar, to take the 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 um, the ammonia out, the the nicotine right, right. out, so that you can taste the notes more clearly. Wow! Whilst All right, I'm gonna... also getting. So how how can I say this? Imagine if you had. I'm just going to make up an example here, right? If, if you, you had apple, sure. if you had apple juice and orange juice mixed together, yeah. okay. And you loaded it up with vodka. After a while, all you would taste is the vodka. But okay. if you diminish the vodka, you would start ta tasting the apple juice and the orange juice separately a little bit more. I, I don't know yeah. how to explain it, so I'm just making it up as I go along. But in my mind, that's what the aging process does. Now, in this particular case, I'm smoking cigar. It's, it's quite an open cigar. In other words, yeah. the leaves are a little bit less tightly packed together, less moisture. So it's smoking quite easily. The draw is really, really good. Okay. Let me, let me have one more puff. Sure. sure. That's beautiful. And now I retrohale the cigar. In other words, I, I pushed my tongue up against the top of my mouth right. and blew the smoke out through my nostrils, through the sinus, thereby tasting the cigar, passing the smoke over what is called the ear, nose, throat area, the back, it does them in the medical sense. So you're, you're getting taste up here as well, not just on your tongue and not just on your lips. Very nice. So used to be this cigar, this Galanis, which I've smoked quite a lot of in the last year, it used to have, a, for me, a very grassy, rich, um, sort of a deepish kind of flavor in that way, not particularly woody. And I, that's why I enjoy the Galanis. I don't get too much seed or a wood out of it. Okay. But I get a sort of a grassy earthiness out of it, right? Now, I'm smoking this now as an aged cigar. And, my, and the feedback to my very dear friend who's given this to me, I won't mention, I, don't, I tend not to mention names. Because he hasn't paid us, so that's why, but that's okay. Yeah. That it is a lighter cigar, and I'm getting oh. those notes much more easily in, in the back of my nose and in my sinus. And I'm enjoying the experience even more intensely. I'm actually drawing for more flavor. And nice. usually I'm not I'm 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 sounding a little bit sommelier like, but I'm trying to compensate and you are. Smart here, yes. <laughs> I'm not usually a balanced cigar person. My You're not a waking, balanced person at all. So I mean, you know. um uh, I that's rich coming you know. from you. And uh <laughs> the thing is <laughs> touche, sir, touche. So. You know, you know, uh, you know I, half my friends at school would, were North London Jews, so this is the right. thing that would go on, right? So oh, there's I'm a little I'm bit aware. of that. That's imparted on yes. me. In the way, yeah. so, I'm aware. <laughs> right. You get that's it. Why we get I, along, you we get, get it. That, that's why we get along so well. So it's like there's... <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to let you finish your thing, but what people have to understand is when you smoke cigars with your mates riffing on each other or picking on each other that's just part of it and nothing like women can't do this you can never say what i just well, said to, if a woman said that to a woman they wouldn't speak for 20 years well, men can well, get away with this and it's all well good. i know i know i know you use that as an excuse but actually i find it quite um acerbic this attack on mental health uh of each other i i go very easy on you i love you and i will right. only give you complimentary words but i will never attack you in the way that you attack me wow Wow, are you really going for that sympathetic, like, oh, I'm the poor me, whatever? Uh -huh. I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I, I'm going to start I, recording I, the no off-air crap. I, I, I will poke and prod and poke and prod yeah. until I get a bloody reaction. And uh, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's the passive-aggressive, and sometimes yeah. it's the aggressive-aggressive. Right, right, right. But anyway. what I was saying is, in terms yeah. of my personal cigar preference, I like aroma more than i like the flavor of a cigar yes. which which will sound a little bit barbaric to those cigar aficionados most cigar aficionados i think or more most real cigar aficionados go for balance they go for, for balance of aroma right. um, uh, taste draw they want those three harmonizations to take place at the same time i'm a little bit out there right <laughs> sure Oh boy! Um, <laughs> I say screw all that. 
I just yeah. want the cigar to smell really good on yeah. me. And I want yeah. other people to be lured in by the intoxicating aroma of a fine Cuban cigar. That was, can I tell you, a little tear. A little tear is forming, and I also threw up in my pants. Um, I thought, <laughs> that's, that's what you think that's about. That's almost that. sweet and sour. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to have Chinese later now. Um, no, I'm kind of the same way, because as we've discussed on many shows, I can't really taste, even with the Cubans, I get a little bit. But really, to me, it's the aroma of the cigar that I like. Um, you know, I, I get a little, like this one, every cigar, I get a little bit of something. But I can't go, oh, it's nutty, it's fruity, it's leathery, blah, 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 blah. So for me, I don't, I don't want to say, oh, I taste this, I taste that, because I really can't. So there's no reason for me to, to lie. But to me, it's the aroma. I enjoy that smell of the cigar. Um, and to yeah. your point, yes, whether it's on me, in the air, or whatever it might be, there's just something about that that's just this, ah. Oh, I, this... uh, I, suspect, I suspect you and I are it's sort of at a similar place in our cigar smoking uh preferences right most cigar aficionados would see it as slightly simplistic i think the aroma i i, I can step out of my body and uh, uh analyze this in a different way the aroma is meant to be the allure or the right. lure and the allure after that you you come for the aroma you stay for the taste that's sort of a, mm. a very old cigarette advert if you know what i right, mean right right you know come for the style stay for the taste you, yeah, the aroma is what draws you in, and it sort of you marinate in it. But actually, the whole point is to get to the various notes. And what I enjoyed about uh, Usman Usman Al Samelier, who's who's not here this week, he's got he's got a um, emergency, a bit of an emergency to attend yeah. to. So sympathies uh, with him, yes. and uh, I hope everything works itself out. That's right. Isn't he took Viagra? He said, and it's been over four hours. I think that I, was the emergency. I I I. You said it. <laughs> and um, uh, one or two episodes ago, Usman had this right. very interesting kit. I'd never seen this kit. I'd never heard of this kit. If you remember, he had a kit of, I think it was eight or 12 little vials of oil. Vials, yep. Last two shows uh, he did. He did the last two shows right. he showed the kit. Um, and that kit, uh, I've never heard of it, never seen before, before Usman. Right. So for people who have difficulty tasting the cigar or tasting right. or identifying for themselves, well, what I, what is it I'm tasting? And it's a little bit complex. I don't know if it's this or that or if it's a mixture. Those are meant to just give you a sort of a key guide as to, oh, this is a bit like cedar. This is a bit right. like oak. It's a bit like coffee. This, and those are sort of in an interesting way meant to push you into start taste. If you're not tasting the cigar before, maybe right. you start tasting it now. And maybe you start looking for your favorite taste, which you never really thought about. Um, uh, it, I mean, it's a, it is a journey. It's uh, right. some people are very, very sophisticated. The same person who gave me this cigar. Okay. Uh, I joke behind his back. This is what he does with his cigar. And I, I've actually taken a, a uh, a cue from him and I start, I've started right. doing it. I'm kind of, this is what he will do. He'll take this cigar and sort of about 10 inches away from his nose, he'll make little circles like this and, and smell it in. <laughs> and he like a, exactly the exact way that you're doing it. And he like almost like a wine sommelier, you know, you know, these right. wine sommeliers and these wine yeah. experts are really, 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 they can by sipping the wine, smelling the wine, looking at the aroma, looking at the, the bouquet, looking at the, the right. color of the wine against a white, you know, background. They can work out which, uh, obviously, which country, what what uh, what uh, what grape, what vineyard. They'll get down right. to what village. They'll get down to which field in which village. I mean, they're they're at nerd level when it comes to these things. And my friend on this cigars, he will do this, and he'll get the same and, thing. And, and he'll go. This was rolled by the lady wow. on the third desk wow. at the back of the. And that's a joke. That's a joke coming right. behind his back. But he's right. at nerd level. And, and when I say nerd, I mean I don't mean the bad In a good way. level. I don't it, mean yeah, the geeky I, nerd. I'm yeah. talking. I'm talking about someone with a very, very, very refined palate and a very refined sense of smell. And right. he will tell me that this cigar is going to develop in this way. This cigar oh. is a little bit sugary. This one's a little bit cedary, but going into the and. Just the process of watching someone like that, okay? Right. You you may not get it first time, you may not get it second time, but the process of watching someone like that again and again does entice you 
into well I, i've been doing it i i've been like hmm, what is it that i'm actually getting out of the aroma okay right. and then we the complex well not complex but sort of the 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 riffing conversations that we have about cigars right is i have put, noticed that if you create a cloud of smoke around you okay so let's say so i've got this smoke around me right okay and i'm and i'm getting a certain aroma the person two feet away is getting a slightly evolved aroma, aroma. It's not the exact okay. same. And then the more interesting thing is that the person on the other side of the room, if they're smelling your cigar, are getting another sort of evolved aroma. So, you know, litmus paper, you know, when we right. were at school and we would do these things about with litmus paper to work out acids and alkalis, and you would see right. the, the color separation. So as you walk, as you walk away from a cigar smoker, the smoke, it, it has an underlying smell, but it it will it will be different. So, if you're walking down, if I'm walking down the street in London, mm -hmm. and I catch a whiff of cigar smoke, I'm, I'm like a I'm like a fucking shark. Sharks can taste blood a yeah. mile away. I can, I get the whiff of a cigar all the way down the street. Yep. And when it's a Cuban cigar, you see your heart jumps because there is a certain sophistication of smell. Isn't it? Oh, wow. Right. Someone's smoking a wonderful cigar. Right. That's true. So, That's um, very true. So, but then, but then that comes back to the thing. The aroma is the pull in, but you should stay for the evolution of the flavor, the taste right. of the cigar. And sometimes you taste it on your lips, sometimes right. on the tip of your lips, on the tip of your tongue, in your mouth. Sometimes if you're retrohaling at the back. So, um, I hope. I mean, the reason I went into this little bit of a, a rant just now is because more and more as of late, I'm enjoying pushing the boundaries of my cigar smoking to merely just blowing smoke and enjoy okay. the aroma. And that's all I wanted to share with you on, on this day where our sommelier is AWOL, absent without leave. Well, you know, that's just that's having, your... having riffed me about it, he himself <laughs> has gone absent. And that's called karma. Now, I don't wish it on anyone, but uh, what goes around comes around. Well, you know, you're only supposed to take one, Vi one Viagra pill, not six. So I'm just saying, when you do that, this is what happens. So pay attention, kids. Don't take your oh. Viagra scotch and cigars. So. And, and because I was enjoying the cigar so much, you I just proverbially ashed myself. Oh, well, here, I'm going to do that a close-up of you while you're so, ashing yourself. Well, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. And ashing oneself... I've convinced, I'm convinced, is a good luck charm. It means oh. you're enjoying it, you're enjoying the moment, and you you're not you're not one of these people that sort of, oh, can I stand my cigar? Well, I've done that many times, but can I stand my cigar up on you know on the ash and let's see what the integrity of the ash is. There's some really there's standing your cigar up is a sort of a bit of a party trick. Some people can do mm. it really well. But actually your cigar has to support you in that because it yeah. has to have the integrity of ash in order to achieve this process. That's very true. Uh, I've, I've no, never been able I, to get my, I've never been able to do that, by the way. My cigars do not support me or my ash. So there you go. Well, go, go on my Instagram, go on Osman's Instagram. Well, mine's very simple. You will find links or you'll find one or two uh, posts where I've actually, I've just stood yeah. it up on an ash. Yeah. And um, it's just, it, it's, it, it's a bit of fun, but actually what it says, the ash on this is so strong. The layers yeah. are so refined that it can be an architectural project. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Listen, some of the construction of the cigars is a masterpiece. So let's, I'm not taking anything away from it. I've just never been able to, even when the nubs came out, that was their claim to fame is you can do it. So I lit up a nub and I did it and it yes, fell down. It's yes, just probably, you've reminded me, you've mm -hmm. absolutely reminded me because last year, sort of roughly yeah. at this time, uh, another friend of mine who I was smoking with last night, I was actually smoking with both of these people last night. He gave me a nub. To smoke. Oh, okay, and I was shocked. It's, but not, that's, a it's not a particularly big cigar. Um, it's a nub. It's an, it's like a midget's penis. You walk around, right. Basically, it's the kind of cigar you like. It's not an expensive cigar. You walk around, you yeah. blow smoke. Yeah. It's it's um it's a relatively big ring gauge. Uh, so I don't yeah. measure ring gauges. I say it's a big ring gauge, medium ring gauge. It's or it's, it's, a, it's a nervous it's like a ring gauge. It's like a fifty or fifty four ring gauge if you're measuring it. I think it's fifty four. I yeah, I think it's mega. It's mega. You could, it's like, I think it's like the Brazilian, the CIO Brazilian Amazon. It's a 54 where like it should be able to stand up on its own. Did I mention I've smoked a 70 ring gauge cigar? 
Holy moly. No, you have not. I've seen that in a porno, but never in real life. Well, so. it, it, uh, um, I think I did mention this, but because okay. I've got, uh, what's that? That, that, that a- ADD, M-O-U-S-C, Alzheimer's, I'm going Dem- with Dementia. All I forgot dementia. what it was for okay. a moment. Yeah. Uh, but I smoked uh, a cigar called uh, Texas Lancero. That was about three mm. years ago. It was 70 ring gauge, 70 inch cigar. A horrible, horrible oh. cigar. Uh, and it took me, it didn't take me, he, the, the guy behind the counter said, this is going to take you five hours to smoke. It took me three days to smoke because I couldn't, I just, I just kept looking. It's one of those cigars that sits in your ashtray and you look yeah. at it and you think, no, I don't want to smoke it. Then you pick it up and you have two puffs. And you, no, I don't want to smoke it. And it just, you haven't got the guts to throw it away and you haven't got the guts to smoke it either. So it just stays in the ashtray. It's one of those See, I won't relight, I won't relight it. With my, if I go away for two hours and come back, I have to have a new cigar. I won't relight a cigar that I've lit and went away. Oh, you've missed, you've, you, well, then you've missed heaven and earth because one of the really nice things to do yeah. is when you have a late evening cigar at home in the lounge right. and fill sure. the lounge with smoke. Yeah. Uh, I Do you do that or are you allowed to do that? So no, I have a rule um, with the uh, with the head oh, of the studio rule. that I yes, see. I have a rule that I am allowed to smoke anywhere in the world, but in the house. So that's why when we do the cigar show, so I am outside studio. The <laughs> only place in the whole world where you're comfortable, you're not allowed to smoke. Okay, well, okay, yes. well, you right. know. well, okay, we 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 won't dissect that. No, not, not now. We, we won't, won't dissect that online. Uh, what I'd like to say is. Sometimes yeah. I light up a cigar late evening at eleven yeah. o'clock. I'll have a right. I'll have a movie. I'll have a black and white movie on. I'll light up yeah. a cigar and then I think, you know what? I'm really a bit. Too t- I'm really enjoying myself. I'm really a bit too tired. But I've got into this habit that I like to leave, maybe up to the band of a cigar okay. sitting in the ashtray because the next morning after breakfast, yeah, with a coffee, really? that relight is great fun. I'm gonna try it now. I will try that. I will the relight that. is great fun. Because okay. not only have you got breakfast to look forward to, there's that little the piece light. of last night. There's that little piece of last right. night that's going to perpetuate this morning. Yeah, but usually when I have a little piece of last night, I, I, I they have to go home. But that's probably something different we're talking about. But anyway. Once again, um, once again, yeah. not for dissection on, uh, <laughs> on a public platform, <laughs> un- unless you want to go for it. I, you, I, you know me. I go for anything. But I want to just say this to Centauri. Um, thank you very much. I feel like Bill Murray. I'm in a tuxedo and it's Centauri time. So uh, as we say, Gio to our Gio, friend. Gio, Usman. Gio, Gio. Ribena time. Best British drink there is. There you go. Gio and cheers at everybody. Or Lahaim if you're Jewish. And, and, and since we're on the on that theme, Lahaim. Lahaim. And it's our holiday this week, apparently. Who knew? Yeah, but that's why London's empty. Absolutely. London is absolutely bloody empty. They're all in uh, Miami. I know. They're all in Miami. My people, you know. So am I. So am I. I am. So I, are you. Head, that's where I am. I actually asked a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. He said he just came back from the promised land. I said, how did you get to Israel? He goes, no, I was in Miami. I'm like, ah, close enough. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it's right, crazy. It's, it's, uh, I, got a, I got a million of them. Stay around. In fact, we, I, we told a joke on um, Vaguely True that I heard 20 years ago. And the comment back was, oh, you watched Joe Rogan. And I was like, no, I watched the comedian 20 years ago, like on Merv Griffin or whoever, who did the original joke. And the joke was about Merv the Griffin Falkland joke. Islands. Remember the oh, Falkland yeah. well, Islands not- when you when you guys invaded the Falkland Islands? Well, I didn't. My, my well, not you. You're, not, you know, but I'm saying your, the country you're living in today, they invaded the Falkland Islands. The, the, yes, we British. Okay. We British, British. British, we British you're- invaded the, we, we did not invade the Falkland. We there took we the Falkland Islands back. Mm. They were ours originally. Yeah, so is this country, but uh, that's not happening. Anyway, um, so the, the joke goes, and I said, I was at university with a friend of mine from Brooklyn. And, you know, the, we know, the guys from Brooklyn, they're not the smartest schools in the shed. And the teacher's talking about the Falkland Islands, how they got invaded. And my friend from Brooklyn says, what Falkland Islands are you talking about? There's the Hawaiian Falkland Islands. There's the Cayman Falkland Islands. And I'm like, no, no, no. The Falkland Islands. He goes, the Falklands. The Falkland Islands. He goes, there's so many Falkland Islands. And I said, we'll explain it to you later about the Falkland Islands. So we told that joke on another show. And somebody's like, oh, you copied Rogan. And I'm like, I don't want to be rude, but Rogan copied some guy from 20 years ago. So just so we're clear. But, you know, it was nice that the fan brought that to our attention. Um, and I was just happy that they watched the short. So there you go. But anyway. Um, 
I don't know, we can well, discuss inter- anything. All interaction is good interaction. Even when people tell you to oh. fuck off, you say, yeah, yeah, come over here and say it to me. Mm-hmm. And that's the Who way it works. That's uh, why we drink to the Yes. <laughs> no, I'll drink to that, too. I'll drink to chin. Chio. Here's, here's to belligerent fans. Love belligerent fans. They're the best. I love belligerent I like fans. The, I, like, I like when they comment and they try to correct us on something, and I'm like, no, I don't think you have that fact right. But I'm, we're always nice. We try. I will say this. We're probably one of the very few shows that we do really try to answer everybody's comment, whether we give it a thumbs up or we say thank you. We really do try to answer it. Some of them just go off on like a 40-page tyrant, and we're just like, uh, we can't even respond. But for the most part, we do answer. our When our fans write a question, we try to answer the question, you know, or ask, say thank you. We try to help them out. We think it's that's the, way, that's the way. That's the way it should be. But um yeah. That reminded me. Oh, whether well, this man has gone uh, hey, away. Walt. So the next show next week, yes. we must do that. The interactive show with, with fans. Everyone. That's right. We'll with sort of fans. like start. You know, I think answering questions. I might. I might have a little surprise guest on as well for you. Um, I'll make it to do something slightly different. Okay. Uh, let's see who I can have on of notable value that might be able to answer cigaring kind of questions better than I could answer them. Not as well as you answer them, Stephen, because you oh, are, yeah, Steve, I can answer absolutely you are, nothing. You are a shining <laughs> beacon of uh, the cigar smoking community. I'm so shining beacon that Cigar Keeper paid me not to become an ambassador. That's this what a shining beacon. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I, didn't say it. I, didn't I say got it. a. I got a nice letter. For, I got a nice letter from Kirby. He goes, "Love your show. Love you. All your friends love you. Uh, here's money. Please don't be an ambassador for us." I'm like, oh, "It is what it is." So you know, he's, uh, yeah. he's your local yokel, as we say, isn't he? he be, well, local, he's local, but in he's U.S. Like, terms, that's local. Even yes, three hours and away is he's, local. He's in he's in Dallas, Texas. I always thought he was in Austin because every time I see him, he's doing something in Austin, and I was like, "Oh, you live like right around the corner from me." Um, and then he invited me to come over and have a stogie, and I was like, "Oh, we're gonna have ice." I'm so excited to meet Kirby and cigars. No, you've said this word before, stogie, and I've heard stogie for for. My... Explain oh. the etymology of stogie. Um, I don't know. I'd have to actually look it up, and I can do that if you like. Because um, but let me look it up. Stogie. I wonder what a stogie is. Actually, it'll be interesting because we do. We don't really use the word stogie here. In, yes, in I know the UK. that. Um, it's slightly an obnoxious U.S. term for a. a okay, fine so we'll just call them cigars. Okay, a sl- It's a slang term. For oh, any yeah. type of cigar, often used to describe, oh, it's, so, well, we can't use stogie ever again. It's often used to describe cheap or roughly made cigars. The term you comes mean- from, wait, 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 here's the, here's the origination. The term comes from the long, thin cigars smoked by the custodian wagoneers in the 17 and 1800s. Now I will never use stogie again. Um, I was invited to smoke a cigar with Mr. Kirby, um, and I could not make it because I was in meetings. And I Cuban? told him that I'm, Cuban or non-Cuban. With Kirby, I'm assuming they would be Cuban. And he invited a few other people, and they were like listing the cigars they were bringing. And the fact that I was crying that I couldn't make it because I was seeing the cigars that were going to be there, and I was just like, if you're like a, a, a one of those people that like to watch the Emmys or the Golden Globes, it would be literally your favorite or movies there and i was just in tears that i could not make it but i did tell uh kirby i will get there at some point i will let him know um and next week i'm in california so i don't think i'll be seeing kirby next week either so there you go as some some said you should because the the for those people who know and for those people who don't know the cigar keep um cigar keep is a online um it was something it was an online it's a form sorry it's like a form right no, Cigar Keep is an, an online entity that was set up for cigar aficionados to upload their cigar, uh, mainly Cuban cigar sort of interest, what they like, upload their boxes and sort of exchange, sort of a, a swap shop. A, okay. Not necessarily for money exchange, but sort of a swap shop. Like, I've got a box of this, you've got two boxes of that, let's trade, that kind of thing. Gotcha. And, and, for, and for enthusiasts to upload their articles and pictures and things like that. Uh, dare I say it, a Facebook for cigar aficionados. Okay. Um, something like this. That's the, the closest thing. And so this this particular entity, and you, the, re- the reason I'm talking about it right now, as you mentioned, Kirby. Kirby's the 
the guy who who bought this uh, sometime last year uh, from the previous owners, and he's setting out to revitalize it and re-energize this uh, something something that's sort of gone kind of a little bit awry and a little bit stale. Right. And that 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 online forum, that online Facebook has certain cigar keep ambassadors which come from which these ambassadors come from different areas of cigar smoking some are enthusiasts some are technical aficionados some right. are instagrammers some are sort of regional organizers of cigar events so there is a mix or of let's say cigar ambassadors or cigar leaders on that and this uh particular entity is being rebuilt up um uh certainly since the last three or four months and um i that's why you mentioned i mean I, i've been yeah. on there uh mainly because of usman for the past couple of years right um and so the remit is to write more articles about specific cigars once again right cuban cigars mainly i think they fray out into the davidoffs because of their media relationships and right, personal right. relationships as well with the davidoff team and davidoff ambassadors Let's put it in an old world way. And I'm not talking about cigars here. Yeah. Usually when you went past a, 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 sh a shop in London, maybe 30, 40 years ago, and it sold mm -hmm. Cuban cigars, it would say purveyors of fine cigars or That's fine true, true. cigar merchants. Yes, I remember right? that. So fine cigars, mm -hmm. uh, this is a very subjective term, fine cigars. But right. that, I, and, and I'm, that, that, I think that, terminology should make a revival to be very honest with you yeah. if we're going to talk about if we're going to start mixing this up with you know the habanos we've talked about habanos cigars right. from cuba cigars from, right. which are and also sort of the better new world cigars also non-cuban cigar i really really have to uh i'm trying really hard to be consistent with the smart about them not saying <laughs> new, world, new world but saying non-cubans right I think the new genre, which I think Habanos won't particularly like anyway, anyway, but is fine cigars. I think I think fine cigars or purveyor of fine cigars is a um, is a beautiful old school old world term. And then hey, look at the luck you're going to have today. So, but I I do like that. I think I think the purveyor of fine cigars because really when you think about it, when we smoke on the show. Yeah. We smoke, we are the purveyors of our of fine cigars. Whether I smoke a Cuban or I smoke a non-Cuban, and you guys usually only smoke Cubans. Um, and so it's just very nice that, you know, we it, can bring this to the people. Yeah, no, I don't, I, I, look, it's I, it, it's down to personal taste. It's not, right. I, 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 it's a little bit of a, uh, a running joke. And I don't want mm. that running joke to get overly tiresome with anyone. There is a difference between Cuban cigars and non-Cuban cigars. There is a difference. Right. One of the right. major differences is the Cuban cigars are made in Cuba. And that's uh, that's a very that's indigenous indigenous right. local product. It has a certain feel. It has a certain taste. Has a... Right. Are they better? Personal choice. <laughs> I'd say, I'd say they're finer. They're finer. In what way? So finer, more complex more subtle, more nuanced, um, more artisan, um, more selective, okay. higher quality. I'm, I'm trying to stick to words where I can actually justify these words. Right, right. right now, you'll get, you'll get, um, um, uh, the uh, Davidoff Davidoff cigars, right? Davidoff cigars go on and on about how perfect their cigars are. The the process, and that's great. The process right. is perfect. The product is perfect. The thing with the Cuban cigars is the product is not often perf perfect. Perfect, right? There's imperfections but in it. The imperfections also, and the imperfections don't mean the the cigar has got ripped paper or uh, ripped wrappers right. or things. I don't mean that kind of imper imperfection in the unexpected change of flavor the unexpected change of ar aromatic notes right. uh sometimes you do get an uh knotted cigars you right. but that slightly more proce processed cheese and non-processed cheese let's go to right, that right. 
Right. Processed cheese is consistently processed cheese. Non-processed cheese can be, you know, sometimes a little bit too salty, sometimes a little right. bit too rich, but it is a more artisan product. And I, right. I, there are plenty of people who've, who've come up with many, many descriptions to describe. Right. But, uh, but our descriptions between you and me, I'm talking, I'm now beginning to talk about fine cigars. What are fine cigars? Right. And I will say, when I smoke non-Cuban fine cigars, and I know CAO Brazilian Amazons are not considered, but I will tell you, they they remind me of a Cuban their, with their construction and their uh, like their aroma, and then they do have imperfections. So I do enjoy that. Um, some of the Fuentes Opus X ones, to an extent, um, but with Padron like the 1926 or 1964 series, or even their, their 8,000 or 7,000, I find those are too perfect because they're pressed. And I really like hand-rolled. Now, I know in Cuba, they're rolled on virgin thighs. Um, but, and, and I know the non-Cubans aren't. Um, but I like, I like the hand-rolled ones because that's how you get your imperfections, whether it's, new, whether it's a non-Cuban or a Cuban. So that's, I find that to be very true. And I enjoy that. It's kind of like you know a Hanukkah gift. It's the surprise of the gift. So this is this is a. So let's carry on with this way. Okay. But one of the things, one of the things I really love doing on my cigars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do not open the band. I, well, I try to avoid opening the band to take right. the, uh, to take the band off. I like the band to the eventually be sort of like take it off in one piece. So with a cigar like this, I do what's called a safe cracker. I, okay. I put this against my ear, and I'm just just gently seeing if I could twist it without hearing okay. a crack in the in the wrapper. I'm just doing this, right, right. And if I hear a little crack in the wrapper, that's when I just stop. All right, there's pointless taking the band off right now. Yeah, it's going to unravel. But uh, those little things, like with with the the non-Cuban cigars, most of the bands that come off, you know, they're like whether it's Camacho or your Arturo Fuentes, yeah. it's easy. With the Cuban, there is this a little bit more engagement. Let's call it engagement. You're kind yes. of like very, you spend 50, 60 pounds on one single stick, your balls right. in. You're you're gonna enjoy this one way or the other, if you know what I mean, right? Yeah, you're gonna try to work out how do I get the most pleasure out of this cigar because I spent 60 pounds. And when I say 60 pounds, how many dollars are we talking about? Sort of 80 plus dollars. Right, right, right. Okay, on a single stick. So we're gonna smoke this for two hours. It damn well better not fuck up, right? I, I need to be very delicate, treat it as a, almost as a, a little friend. Hang on. I wonder if I can hear a crack on this. I don't know if you heard that. I managed to get the band to swivel. Can you see? I can see. I can see. Can you the see fans the band can see. is swiveling? I can That's see. my favorite, favorite type of cigar where I can do that. Now, however trivial, however superficial that feels, yeah? Right. I've just yeah. achieved something on that cigar. Which I, because the thing is, but then I can keep it. I'm superficial as they get, right? I right. want my ban on my fucking cigar. I because it makes me, it improves the flavor of the cigar for me. Screw everyone else. I paid for it. Yes, yeah. There's some people who say, "Oh, let me take the band off, not to so as not to intimidate everyone else in in the room as to what I'm smoking." Yeah, right. oh, I want my band on. Is it's on there for a reason? Yeah. Yes, it's on That's there right. for a bloody reason. It's there to tell you what it is, and also to hold the wrapper together at the end in case it starts playing and all that kind of stuff. Right, okay. but see, so, not most people don't know that. Most people don't realize that you keep the band here or there. On because if you take it off before the band gets enough heat, where it will either like you're doing turning it or peel off, that yes. it'll also peel your cigar. And so a lot of people think people are showing off, and it has nothing to do with showing off. It has to keep the um, the uh, the construction of your cigar the way it should be, so you can enjoy it, not be going. I have to paste my leaf down. So. You know, it's ultimately, not to show it's off. Your, it's it's, no, it's your thing. Your cigar, do what you want with it. Yeah. Because no, don't do the right ear, thing. Try and push it out of the other ear if you feel like. Yeah, it, yeah. Do, no, no, do but the right my thing. My rationale, I, my rationale yeah. for doing that, is to keep that band on as long as possible because I'll try and move it lower and lower down to the the head of the cigar. Uh, right. And there, there comes a point where you have to slide the band off, and I, I, I literally, I will smoke if I'm really enjoying a cigar. I'll smoke until my fingers burn. Uh, I can feel that. No, no, I'm not. This is the way I am. Yeah. Um, and I strongly suspect this cigar is going in this direction. I've been enjoying it immensely. Apart from the, the splendid conversation that I'm having with you, I've been enjoying this, this cigar right. immensely. But the added bonus, the cherry on top, is that that band I managed to slide up. However right. silly, petty, whatever anyone says, I enjoy that. 
And uh, we each to their own. Everyone has, and then someone will use. So I don't recommend personally using toothpicks to to but see you do. what toothpick is. No, I don't. I I use um, this young device, <laughs> my 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 old letter opener. Toothpick, you get the woodiness of the toothpick. It distorts okay. the flavor of the cigar totally. You need a you need a, a metallic, a non-reactive, like a cigar spear or something like that. But even right, with right. cigar spears, the cigar can twist on that. So sometimes a two-pronged cigar spear is quite good because it holds it in place. Okay. Or something that, that's got a, f I don't know if you can see a flat oh. edge to it. It's my little sort of, uh, can yeah. you see that? Yeah. It's not a cigar spear. It is a letter opener. Gotcha. It's very nice. I get down to a certain point and I'm sort of like, yeah, this cigar is good. I'm done. Like I'm, I've had it. I would just, I'll light another one, but I do uh, Mr. Ali Khan, one of our fans, cause he's here every Saturday. So thank you. Um, mm -hmm. He says, I second Riz's 100 Cubans have he eliminated the surprise. Me. Whereas with the non Cubans, you know exactly what they're going to be like. They always taste the same. They smoke. They would never be plugged. Um, no, I've had some non Cubans that you have to literally get the special tool out that Usman brought us um, to unplug them because the draw on them is like they someone someone that what day. What are we talking about here? What are we talking happen? about here? Cigars. Oh, what right. are you talking about? I don't <laughs> what know where you, you went with that. that some uh, I'm that reading, if with. you read the, you know, we'd be really cool. I mean, I know it's your show. If you would read the comments, uh, you would know what we're talking about. <laughs> well, it's clearly not. You're talking over me. No, I'm not. I was talking about the thing. Yes, right? you are. There you are. Oh, it's gonna be like this now. Oy vey. So, but anyway, oy vey. Oy vey. <laughs> oh, we've come back to our roots this this week, have we? This week. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna do that. We're doing the whole Passover, Shoah Tova thing. It's so, I'm gonna talk like an old Jewish man today. I'll be very good. Oy, when, when, do this. When, what were you expecting me to say? There you go. <laughs> oy, it hurts when I do this. Don't do that. So you know. It's like the old joke about the have rabbi. Got, have you got? Have you got? Have you got one of those? Uh, one of those black fedoras with the curly locks hanging down. So when you put that on, going. No, to, first of all, the, the curly locks are called. <laughs> they're called pay socks. And no, I, I mean, those are. By I the was way, being. Just, I was being open and generic. So everyone yes, I know. <laughs> first of all, I'm not a real Jew. I am a fake Jew. I I I have you know cheeseburgers. I eat pork. Asians, you know, whatever I can. But anyway, um, so I don't mind that. Now, my yarmulke, the little skull cap we wear, mine has a propeller on it. So, <laughs> I, when, I go, so when I go to synagogue, um, my rabbi loves me because he's like, oh, good, Steve's here because he's the only guy with a propeller on his beanie. So I'm like, hey, it says I have to cover up for God. It didn't say I can't put a, a propeller on my beanie cap. So, you know, I, I enjoy my religion. So can I tell you, plus... As Roll always brings up on Vaguely True, we have space lasers. So uh, what are we going to do? So there you have it. <laughs> All I remember is last week's show, one of the shorts that we did, we were talking about the Cuban Missile Crisis. We were. And you know, if you remember, we were saying the Cuban Missile Crisis. And Yosemite was like, yeah, yeah, we shouldn't talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis. We have two Pakistanis and a Jew. That's not going to be good. So, and, that, and that video got lots of likes. Um, from all the government agencies, it apparently, didn't that get any it. likes. Mm -hmm. It didn't get any likes because of Cuba or missiles or mm. Pakistanis or Jews. It got likes because I felt at that stage that yes. there would have been one man in charge who could have solved it there and there. Here we go. Here it comes. Go ahead. And get see, it out. I, I, I You're said, going to. I didn't say. I didn't even mention Donald Trump once. <laughs> I knew. Let's see. Hey, only 43 minutes it took you to get to Donnie's name today. That's congratulations. The you discombobulator know, surprised... of discombobulators. I'm surprised Donnie has not showed up on the show yet. Him I've got and shit loads of money and I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. And I think what else? What else is money for? You know, mm. uh, if, if it's not to give you, empower you to say, you know, some people feel, you know, they can't say things or can't do things right. and politicians always like kiss ass and this and that. Donald Trump doesn't kiss anyone's ass, right? Yeah, I agree. Uh, he's right. Uh, you know, this is how I want it. And tomorrow I can change my mind, but maybe yeah. I won't. And yeah. maybe I won't. Yeah, and that is a very, very, uh, from a sort of a, a leader, why should you let the other side know what you're thinking ever? Even your own side, why should you let your own side know what you're thinking? Or, or why would you even think? I think is the way you have to look at it. Or, so, or, or not. <laughs> Or not. As may be the case. There you go. So if you're playing chess, you don't tell the other person your moves before you play them. 
Right, right. I like to play Chinese Go though, because it, it's more like intense. That. that was a great one. That was a I great like, one. That was a great I like that. that. That's I, going up on the shorts. Yep, I like I like playing I like playing Go. I like that. I like the strategy of Go more than chess. Yeah, but you don't tell the other side the strategy. You play no. poker faced. Yeah, and sometimes you have to pretend you're losing before you win. Mm. Sometimes you actually are losing, but you don't want the other side to know it. And it's a game of life is a game of smoke and mirrors. If you're in charge, I'm sure. That's true. If you're not in charge, you're just the sheep going. Yeah. Did you ever? Did you ever, when you were a kid? Did you ever play Risk? Oh, I love Risk. I, I played love it for that. a long, long time. Yeah. World domination. World dom Now that now there's a game. Now yeah. there's a board game that would have benefited as a as a kid from cigars around the table. So if we've been smoking cigars and playing Risk. Could you imagine? That's, no, 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 no. That's, that's, that is maybe a two cigar game, two big cigar game. That's like, that's yes. a four hour game where, you know, what a wonderful memory you've evoked just now. You're welcome. One of the great pastimes, which I don't yes. think people do enough, play a game of chess, smoke a cigar. Play yes. a board game like Monopoly or Risk or Scrabble if, you're, if, you, if you really want to get very uh, intellectual and smoke a cigar time passes the conviviality increases uh world domination is easier losing right. is easier because you know you're happy regardless and yeah. that's why i've always thought of this as more actually this is more than a truth serum it's a happy machine it keeps mm. you going in uh it, it lets your thoughts develop it lets your conviviality develop and it lets your gameplay develop i use cigars in business a lot when i have to have a meeting I always find out if we can smoke cigars because what I found the cigar will do in a meeting is I may know what I want to say, but I can take a few puffs, mm. look like I'm going to say something, take a few more puffs and then say my thought. And it's mm -hmm. just keeping people on the edge, which is kind of one of those um, Onassis type things, you know, like what Onassis, uh, Aristotle Onassis used to do. It's just, you keep them on the edge and they never know what you're thinking. And he used to wear sunglasses in meetings because he never wanted people to see his eyes. I don't care about my eyes, but, you know. Oh, incidentally, there, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at my cigar. It suddenly developed a little bit of sweetness. And you can, you can kind of get it on the edge of your lips. Let me just show you. So the outside leaves are called a wrapper. And can you see the wrapper there? Yes, it's now, beautiful. in an ideal world, in an ideal world, you shouldn't have the black line so pronounced, that sort of semi-charred right. line in an ideal world. But I smoke a little bit heavy. I smoke a little hard. So there's right. a little bit more heat generated in my cigars. Um, I, I'm trying to make an effort. Also, the, just, I can just show you the thickness of the wrappers. It's actually quite thick wrappers, holding the integrity of the cigar quite well. Right. I am making a concerted effort as of late in the last two or three weeks to go slightly slower on my cigar smoking. Thank God. No, I, I, what mm. I mean is this, I don't mean smoking less cigars. I mean, taking a cigar and if, so this Galanis normally is a 45 minute smoke for me. All right. Well, we've been smoking it for 48. So congratulations. 48. And, and I'm only, what did I say? Maybe just under two thirds of the way through, right. but I'm loving it, and primarily because I'm talking a lot more than puffing. And I right. think this is the way to smoke a cigar, even if you're smoking on your own. Find something to 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 slightly slow down. Yes. If if you're if you're a fast smoker, I mean, there's some people. I am a fast smoker, right. but now I'm watching. I'm I'm trying to take lessons in this severely old age that I've got to from other people. Other people, whether they're younger or older than me. Smoking slower does increase the enjoyment. It's like just chewing your food more, isn't it? Yeah. You just get more flavor out of it. Yep. Um, I've always that, you know, we, as slower. kids, we were told to chew our food. Do you get the yep. food? Those sort of swallowing gulps of steak. Right, chew right. the steak, get the yeah. flavor out of it. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I will tell you that I, I, when I was taught to smoke cigars, my grandfather said, a cigar is like a woman. You take your time with it. And I've always learned that. And I've always done that. And I just take my time. I enjoy you, my cigar. You very lucky fellow. You said a very important word just now. When you were young, you were taught to smoke yes. cigars. Yes, I was. And, I know, and you probably don't necessarily mean formal training, but sort of the hints and guidance. Oh, if you're going to light that, light it this way. Right. I did not have any of those things. I basically had to, 
Well, uh, my cigar journey started by stealing cigars from my father, which he didn't <laughs> mind too much, right? Very but right. I never really had that formal process. So I kind of am I'm a little bit enjoying retro learning, if you know what I mean. So I've done mm. the hard part. I've smoked loads and loads and loads of cigars. Now I'm smoking in a different way. Right, right. Um, and there is a, I have to say, a greater level of, of appreciation involved in that. Yeah. So um, it, a cigar is a cigar is nothing in more than a, like a fine scotch, a fine woman, a supercar or an old vintage car. You want to take your time and enjoy it because that's an hour or two or whatever it's going to be. That's your mini holiday. That's your, you're not really getting that time back. So you have to enjoy that time with it. And that's how when I smoke a stove, a cigar. When I smoke a cigar, I want to enjoy it. I, whether it's with my mates, whether it's by myself, whether it's at a meeting, I want to enjoy that moment. And to me, that's the most important thing that in my mind about a cigar and being with your friends when you smoke or by yourself is the moment. Whether it's a small little Robusto or it's a big Churchill, you have to enjoy that moment. This one's outstanding. Well, you should thank your friend. Uh, I, I am. This oh, one's okay. Outsta- <laughs> this one's outstanding. Hmm. And what were you smoking again? Tell everybody. It's uh, the Por Laranyaga Galanes. Uh, cigar that disappeared from the UK market for maybe about a year or so. Uh, it's been okay. back for the past couple of months. This one is an aged one. So this is out of someone's uh, humidor, personal humidor that's been sitting around and they've been aging. I don't know. I can't remember. I was given this last night. It was slightly tipsy. So I don't remember what year this is. Shocker. From. Okay. I was at uh, upstairs at Langan's, uh, the, mm-hmm. the members club where when you visit London, you will be taken upstairs mm-hmm. in Langan's to, to smoke a fine cigar. Do, you, and, do I have to uh, wear my tuxedo or just do I not have to wear pants? You or how does that work? Wear whatever you want. That's I want to wear a tux. Like I go I, like I this, sure. and, and to this day, I haven't been thrown out. Um, I'm going to wear a tux. I think everywhere we go in London, wherever we do, I'm going to wear a tux. I think that's going to just be too much fun. No, actually, can I share a story with you? Please. On that note, on the tux note, I had an invite two evenings ago. I went to Hackett in London on Savile Row. Okay. Very uh, nice. So uh, me and a couple of friends, we went to Hackett. They had a... Uh, uh, sort of a canapes and drinks kind of event, which which they were doing in association with Salon Privé, which is the organizer of these classic and supercar events in London mm. and in Blenheim Palace. Right. I thought there was going to be maybe 100 people there. There was about 25, 30 guests. It was, it was absolutely oh. lovely. I had the canapé table to myself. I was, nice. And I had the best canapé. Sorry, I'm building up to the cigar part of this, by the way. I'm... Uh, I had the best canopy I've ever had in my life. I took photos wow. of it. I, I'm going to put, after this, I'm going to put it up on my story so everyone can see exactly Please. what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Uh, it was tuna ceviche with mint and chilies in a, in a, in a twill that just didn't crack and this explosion right. of this tuna. Oh. Now, the owner of Hackett, Jeremy Hackett, who is one of right. Savile Row's fine tailors, he's got a big uh, global uh, brand, uh, brand, Hackett, um, right. is a cigar smoker. In fact, he's actually also an, a, 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 an ambassador of Cigar Keep that we were talking about earlier on. Is he a fan yeah. of the show, at least? I, I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> as long as Donald Trump is a fan of the show, that's all I care. I'm aware. Uh, at this, so this beautiful townhouse on Savile Row, one of the, right. you know, there's lots of tailor's shops. There's Geeves and Hawks. There's, um, uh, there's, uh, the, now you see, my mind goes blank. I, I, right. I know a lot of the tailor's shops, but Hackett is one of them. It's a right. townhouse. As you go in, the front section is about suits and the next section is about uh, evening wear. So I saw beautiful tuxedo there with a shawl lapel. And I thought, right, oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. This looks outstanding. This is where the tuxedo connection comes in. And okay. had beautiful smoking jackets. And, and then I remember, of course, Jeremy Hackett is a cigar smoker. I, I see him occasionally at TomTom, in fact. I see him buying cigars okay. there. The back room of this place is called the green room. Beautiful, right. sort of a, 
it used to be a cigar smoking room and there's a beautiful humidor there which is empty oh. and i absolutely would have been in heaven <laughs> Had there been an active cigar room, of course, you know, laws, licensing laws and yeah. have changed and things like that, right? But very evocative of the old world that still existed. It wasn't this old world. It still existed 25-ish years ago, even 20 yep. years ago, where you could go in, smoke. You were having your, you'd be measured up in your suit, then you'd just pop into the back room, have a have a coffee or a champagne and, and light a cigar Scar, and wait yeah. for the tailor and then tailor was here. Yeah, I like I, so, smoking Mr. jackets. Would you, would you please come back and be remeasured yeah. for you? Oh gosh, I want to go there now just for a smoking jacket. It's a jacket time and place that disappeared, and and yeah. and uh, your your um, we we've, we've spoken about Kirby Allison. That's what Kirby Allison, I think, tries to capture. That you know, there's a sort of a 1930s, 40s. Yeah, even fifties, sort of a, a London, uh, a Britain, a lifestyle. Uh, yeah. a way of living, a way of smoking, dressing, shoes, suits, yeah. whatever it means, mannerisms, etiquettes. Yep. And then to tie into this, and this is a long winded story. Um, uh, there's another, uh, there's a really good YouTube channel that I watch and I, I bumped into the gentleman that's sort of the face of that YouTube channel in London. And that's the gentleman's gazette, which also does. I've seen that. I yeah, love that very, show. Very, I really, really enjoy this. I like I really that. Enjoy, because yeah. sort of very, very practical tips on if you get a, you know, if you get an ink stain on your shirt, how to get it out. Yeah. If you're wearing rings, which fingers should you wear those rings on, depending right. on what personality you have and what you want to portray. All that kind of stuff. Really, really cool yeah. stuff for the for the for the gentleman as a gentleman's right. gazette. Yeah. Um, but this kind of old school, old world, slightly more purer. Can I say purer? Can I get away with sure. that? Purer way of living. Yeah. Uh, sort of with etiquettes and, you know, certain underlying rules because people tend not to see the rules anymore. The rules of maybe cigar smoking, how to smoke right. a cigar, how to light a cigar. Right, right. Uh, I was very lucky, though, because my grandfather went through all that with me and even how to enjoy. He's like, they're not, I never smoked a cigarette. So he'd be, they're not cigarettes. They're meant to be enjoyed, not meant to be. And in, they're in your lucky. They're in your yeah. lucky. And he said, like, you don't finish them in seven minutes. And I'm like, ah. And so from the first time I had one, I realized that, you know, based on the size, it's whether it's 40 minutes or two hours, that's what you're, you're there for. The, it's the event. And so I, that's, when I pick up a cigar, even to do the show, I look at it and I go, this is the cigar today for the event. And it's an event. And if I go to someone's house and smoke a cigar, I bring whatever. But I always bring like my little cigar case with, you know, five or six cigars. So everybody can have a cigar, whoever wants. But when you talk about smoking jackets, I like smoking jackets because they're made out of silk and silk propels the smoke. So I'm sure your gentleman in, on, on the row there has silk smoking jackets. So that's one of the places we're going to be stopping in London because daddy needs a smoking jacket. So, you know, I'll be they wearing that on every show. I had, the, I had the totally opposite view. I had the totally opposite view. Oh. The smoking jacket, yeah, the ones that are made of velvet, for example, mm. or the point of the smoking jacket was is when the gentlemen retired to the smoking room in their right. dinner jackets, they would take their dinner jacket or their tails off, right. put on the smoking jacket because the smoking jacket attracted the smoke oh, okay. and aroma. Yeah, take their smoking jacket back off, put their dinner jacket back on, and cut so they wouldn't smell so much of smoke. Oh, okay. So the smoking jackets I've had in the past were made out of silk, which may have been wrong. And they were made out of silk because smilk, smilk, it's smilk. Smilk? Or silk. Smilk. There's smilk. a new one. Smilk. smilk. It's a new smoking jacket. It's we'll made out of smilk. We'll smilk. Yeah. Um, it's because I'm, you know, scotch at seven in the morning. Um, can, we, can, I, can I even refine that? Let's call it smilk. Yeah. Smilk. Smilk. The smilk jackets or silk for the people that speak English, um, propel the smoke away and it doesn't stay with you. Um, and that I thought was interesting because my grandfather had a silk smoking jacket. And the reason he had that, and he told me, so this way he would smoke it and he would be able to go out and to do whatever. Look at this. Here, we'll get a close up of that because that's a beauty. There you go. Full integrity. Mm. See, you like to collect that. That's why. That's a beauty. And my little new, my little non Cuban. That one's going is, on the back of my phone. That Galanes is going on the back of my phone. I and you can see, that and you can see my little one here isn't budging worth a 
anything. So there you ah, go. Ah, no, but you, you could do the safe out. cracker. You could hold it next to the. I did. It's it's not going to happen because I could, this is I've had their cigars before, and it, when it gets even down to like here, it won't budge. It, it won't. So I have to unpeel it. So it just so is. It's often, not Cuban. often, often is because there is perhaps a touch of glue. Yes, that's holding the the the, the band yeah. to the wrapper, which is. I personally don't like that at all. I don't either. I do not either. I like the Cubans because they go, eh, pff, done. And I'm like, beauty. And that's just, listen, I, I'm i a fan of the Cubans. When I get them, I smoke them. My problem is uh, I smoke them like they're water. Then I, I savor every one of them, but it's like, I got to smoke. I haven't had a Cuban forever. That's like going to London. I already see my bill for cigars is going to be huge and I'll be smoking cigars everywhere. And I'm okay with that. Yesterday, I was sitting in uh, Tom Tom. Mm -hmm. Of course you are. With Christian. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, a gentleman sitting opposite me from right. Oklahoma. Really? Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Steve Martin. <laughs> Steve from, Martin uh, from Dirty, Dirty Rotten Scarlet. Yeah. Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Yep. Um, and he was smoking a Partagas Linea Maestra Maestro, which is the new blue label Partagas that's sort of okay. been released on the, the UK market two or three days ago. And he says, I'm an avid collector of cigars back home in Oklahoma. Yep. We have a great we have we have a great lounge in Oklahoma City, burned by Rocky Patel. That's there. OK. Um, and so he smokes, you know, his his non-Cuban cigars because they're and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And he was smoking that part of gas. And he said, you know what? This is a cigar. Nice. He just sat there with a massive grin on his face. Okay, and it was like it was like the the cat that got the milk, if you know what I mean. Yeah. The mouse that got the cheese, right? The um, there's a there's a a place in Pakistan where I'm from. You know, right. K2 Mountain, K2. Sure. Yeah. Not personally, but I know it. Lots yeah. of tourists go to see K2. Right. Lots of tourists go to see K2. Most tourists go just to base camp to see this beautiful, so it's almost like a pyramid mountain, perfect pyramid rising away. I saw a documentary where one of the expert climbers of K2 said, you know, I go to K2 again and again, not to look at K2 anymore. Right. I go there to look at the faces of the tourists who are seeing it for the first time. time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that was the look on this guy's face. Wow. When he was smoking this Partagas, Linea Maestra Maestro, Blue label. I would show it right. to you, but hang on. Uh oh. Breaking news. Well, uh, just to exemplify, this is this. This is actually a reto. This is even. This is the 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 new Partagas. The part. Mm. How do we? How does Osman do it? So that's the new that's Partagas like blue label. That's the reto wow. that I smoked two days ago. Okay. Now, they're normally Partagas bands are red. Right. Okay. So normally Partagas bands uh, um, are this color. That's a Partagas Series D. Yep. Yep. They're red. When I say normally, they're always red. So this new, this new uh, blue label, this new blue label is a much more refined cigar. Okay. Much, much more refined cigar. Beautiful cigar. The look on his face was everything. Wow. Yeah. That's and that's and and that's it, isn't it? Isn't that the and that's just the part about enjoying your cigar. I was right? enjoying Being my cigar, but the look on his face increased the enjoyment of my yep. cigar. <laughs> and that's what people don't understand. It's just that it's that brotherhood. You may not know the guy, and I'm sure you didn't know the guy from Oklahoma, and he didn't know you. Oklahoma, but it's Oklahoma, fact, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Every time I hear Oklahoma, I think of Steve Martin in Dirty Rotten right. Scoundrels. That's exactly with, right. And I like the part where he's sitting with his trident and asks if he can go to the yeah. bathroom, too. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's my right. favorite that's scene. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it's just the fact that you get to watch somebody enjoy or you're in that and they're having something and they're just like, wow. You know, it's like the first time someone drives a certain car and you're with them and the look on their face is like they're like five years old again. You, and that's their enjoyment the becomes thing. your enjoyment. Correct. That is very true. Um, it's kind of an infectious thing, and um, and and I'm I'm only saying this because I'm talking about someone who collects and smokes uh, non-Cuban cigars solidly. Right. You put you put that in his hand, 
And no one's putting a gun to his head, smoke this. Yep. He came in, he sat down with his wife, he was sitting opposite me, smoking, and right. we just sort of we engaged in conversation. He said, That is a cigar. There you and go. And the way he said it is it was all sort of like uh he just seen K2 for the first time, or he right. just been given the ten, you know, the ten commandments for the first right. time, or or the fifteen if you believe Mel Brooks. So yeah. So and um <laughs> So there is something in it. It's not yeah. just me blowing hot air and smoke. There, there is something in it. Um, and you don't know that unless you are a cigar smoker. Yeah, because like a lot of people I see in London cigar lounges, and I, well, I see a lot in London cigar lounges, right. is um, you get people trying cigars for the first time or, right. oh, I'm not really a cigar smoker. I saw a couple of chaps. Yesterday evening, we're not really cigar smokers. What do they go to first? They go to Cohiba first, most expensive bloody right. brand, right? Because you know, the branding is so good, you know, you think of yeah. Cohiba, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's where they start. So their appreciation starts at a different level. If you start driving a Rolls, if the first car you drive is a Rolls Royce, then how are you going to appreciate that Rolls Royce versus anything else, if you know what I mean? But if you right. build up to it, if you build up to it, yeah. You think, oh, this now this is a car, yeah. right? Look at the look at the the craftsmanship, and then yep. if it comes too easy, if it comes too easy, then it's not the appreciation level that starts to diminish. Correct. And so this game of uh, uh, with the Cuban cigars as well, that you know this artisan thing. Sometimes you might not get a great one. Sometimes it's plugged. Sometimes you have to play with it and engage with it, and sort of put the the spear in and sort of pull out the 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 stem and. Right. That's the engagement. That's right. You're looking, you're searching for flavor. You're searching yeah. for aroma. You're searching for draw. And um, that's Cuban cigars for you in an yeah. hour. In, in an hour. Well, everybody, this is, oh, as always, I want to, th- I was going to say my, my, both my hosts, but well, Osman, we hope everything is well. Um, yeah. We send our, our best thoughts to you and, and to your family. Um, and I still haven't all- finished it. And I still haven't finished yeah. it. I know. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. Yeah, it's very good. And next week we're going to, I think, take um, because Usman will be here, so he better than us will be able to um, help you out with your cigar questions. And I gave you, I gave you the amateur rent. He'll give you the pro rent. Yeah, and uh, Cheryl can go with that. Um, And then we may have a surprise guest, which will be very nice Um, for you people that don't want to look at our pretty faces. You can see us wherever you get your podcast. Look for two old farts making noises and look for the Habano cigar and drink show. Um, And for you people, I'm assuming we're doing next Saturday live because Saturday live seems to get the most amount of views on the live broadcast, or unless we're doing it on Friday. Let's do, it. Let's do it. Any questions, any questions for the audience, audience, start messaging them in. We'll start answering them. There you go. And we'll be back like, next Saturday. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't unsubscribe. That's a big one. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> just don't unsubscribe. Please subscribe. Um, and that's it. I think I, we're done. We have nothing else to say other than thank you for watching. And we will um, go f- A to Z. And we'll, that's right. what we will do. I'm going to ask you one last thing. Sure. I dare you to go to credits. Okay, well, there you go. We're going to go to credits.